being Divas Champion before, actually facing AJ in a match that wasn't for the Divas Championship when she was a Divas Champion, and with them both going, uh, you know, pretty far in their career since premiering in the WWE, I think that AJ versus Layla is the next match we will see for the Divas Championship after this program finishes up, not taking anything away from what AJ and Caitlyn have been doing for the Divas Division. Right now, also, you have to take into consideration there really isn't no one else other than AJ or Layla able to compete for the Divas championship because there's no one in a position right now to take that championship off of AJ with the incredible amount of momentum that she's been building since winning her inaugural championship. After that pure wrestling match we saw with AJ and Caitlyn, it's pretty much been AJ coming up cutting promos about being the best Divas champion we have seen in years, and she might be the best Divas champion we have seen in years. She's not as good as a Trish Stratus or Alita by no means. We're having matches that good that one of their matches in 2004 was the main event of a Monday Night Raw where Lita knocked off Trish Stratus to win the Divas Championship, not taking anything away from how Lita and Trish Stratus have wrestled, but definitely AJ is one of the best Divas we have seen as champion in years. She's one of the quickest in the ring when it comes to technical ability and speed, and she's one of the most unpredictable characters when it comes to being involved in storylines. Now, one of the down points of AJ's character in the WWE when she was the general manager, when she was uh, a valet for people like John Cena, was we weren't seeing her wrestle as much. And that proved to be very critical because when she started wrestling again and started to put herself in a position to challenge for the Divas Championship, she was kind of at, uh, showing a little bit of ring rust, which wasn't a good thing for her to be showing weeks away from challenging for the Divas Championship. She was almost in matches where she was putting up no offense, she was putting up no much of a fight, and because of that, uh, the Divas Divas Division was receiving really bad reviews, and AJ, likewise, was receiving really bad reviews. The best thing about her being Divas Champion now is that she will have to wrestle, and she will have to provide some kind of offense and put up a fight, as opposed to just sitting there and taking a beating for the majority of the match. It's going to be very different from being involved in a battle royal, where she can kind of just sit in the corner and allow the other Divas to put off a great match, and then she comes out of nowhere and wins the match. She's going to actually have to fight to defend the championship. She allows she's going to be the was champion for a very long time. That remains to be seen. I'm giving her the timeline of at least till September or October to win the Divas Championship. When she wins the Divas Championship, when she loses the Divas Championship, rather, it's going to be someone to, who has earned the opportunity to be Divas Champion rather than uh, someone who hasn't, who's just going to come out of nowhere and take the title from her. Whoever takes the championship off of AJ is going to be someone who earns the right to be Divas Champion, no matter if it's Natalia, it's the Funkadactyls, it's Tamina, whoever it is that takes the championship off AJ is going to be someone who earns the right to call themselves the Divas Champion, who has worked diligently to get themselves in a position to challenge for it, and that's the way it should be with how good AJ's been performing, but with how good Good AJ's been performing right now. You can pretty much say on this radio show that there's no one in a position right now to take that championship off of AJ. I have been on the AJ fan wagon for quite some time. I'm sure a lot of wrestling fans have jumped on the AJ fan wagon in addition to myself. You've uploaded your photos, your videos to your AJ fan sites. You've been covering AJ's inaugural reign as the Divas Champion, and it's for good reason because AJ has come further as Divas Champion than some people who have been Divas Champion before in the past. You take into consideration Candice Michelle, who has been the women's champion. I mean, it took her a long time before she was ever even considered to be women's champion. I mean, uh, AJ came from pretty much out of nowhere, finishing within the top three of NXT Season 3 and won the Divas Championship quicker than anyone, quicker than Kelly Kelly or Eve Torres ever did. And she's been holding on to that championship with her life and very diligently. And that's why I think that there's really no one else in a position to take that championship off of AJ, especially with how high the WWE creative team are on AJ. And I'm going to continue to be a huge supporter of AJ as long as she holds on to that Divas Championship and long after she has dropped the Divas Championship to someone who is going to have to earn the right to take that championship off of her. It's not just going to be some diva who comes out of nowhere off the all-new NXT who hasn't been there in WWE long enough to be the Divas Champion or be considered a top contender. Now, we have seen some divas show up in the WWE win both the Women's Championships and Divas Championships probably within their first match. Gail Kim was one of the first ones to do that in 2003-2004 when she won the Women's Championship in a Battle Royal, which was the kickoff match on Raw right of the box. Not very many Divas do that kind of thing. Taylor Wilde won the Women's Championship of TNA shortly after her arrival in TNA Wrestling as well. We have seen very few women do that, but uh, I think that no one pretty much is going to do the same kind of thing to AJ. AJ is going to hold on to that championship 
championship very diligently and whoever takes it from her is going to have to earn it. I mean women's wrestling has come a long way since the days of Alundra Blaze and Leilani Kai and uh, Heidi Morgan who competed in a match with Alundra Blaze in 1994, 1993, 1994 for the women's championship after it had been put on hiatus for a number of years in the WWE. Since matches between Alundra Blaze and Heidi Morgan from 93, 94, women's wrestling has come a considerable long way and it's being reviewed and looked at very different uh, from what it was probably 15 years ago. The perception of women's wrestling has changed and I think the perception of women's wrestling should be looked at better than what it's been being looked at for at least the last year and a half. The last year and a half the WWE Divas Division has received a fair share of criticism and it's completely unnecessary to be reviewing the Divas Division in such a negative way. We should be reviewing the Divas Division more positively than what we have been over the last number of years because if we were reviewing it more positively then we would be seeing more opportunities hand to Divas like AJ and we probably would be seeing the more beautiful Divas like Summer Rae being given the Divas Championship. Now WWE have always had a philosophy that looks have sold in professional wrestling and I think for the better part of the last six months they've had the philosophy of actual wrestlers who can actually contribute a lot to the Divas Division apart from actual looks actually get over in the Divas Division more than what looks do but they're trying to get back into that formula of distributing a Divas Champion who has both technical skill and looks has the whole package and I just referenced here earlier on in the show that AJ kind of fits the personality of a Christy Hemme both from the way she has a look in the professional wrestling business and both from the way she can actually wrestle she puts me in mind of a young Christy Hemme who was coming up through the ranks in the WWE after winning the inaugural Diva Search as one of the final two competitors of that series. She almost immediately started competing and AJ, after her arrival from NXT Season 3, immediately starts competing. Doesn't win the Women's or Divas Championship right away, but months after her arrival, she now can call herself Divas Champion. And because she is Divas Champion, that puts the division in a better position than it would have been six months ago if Total Divas were going to premiere back then. I think that a lot of wrestling fans are more excited now also for the premiere of Total Divas. Now that AJ is your Divas champion, the Bella Twins are back. And we have a lot of new talent in the of Divas who we're getting our first looks at on both NXT, Raw, and SmackDown. And we're even getting looks at NXT Divas and wrestlers on pay-per-view nowadays, which is great as WWE strives diligently to promote the new talent in the of This is part two of our look at AJ's reign as the WWE Divas champion. The previous video blog we initiated on AJ's reign as Divas champion can be found in our YouTube video archives. We also released a number of AJ video blogs a couple of years ago. We talked about AJ on our radio show for the first time ever. The video got so many views that we started releasing more videos on people like AJ and Caitlin. And through the months that we've been doing it, we've been getting a great response on our YouTube channel and we thank you for doing that. That's why we're offering our opinion on AJ being the WWE Divas Champion and kind of offering up our congratulations. Always been a huge fan of AJ. I've never jumped off the AJ fan wagon at any point in time. And I think that as long as we continue to support people like AJ, we're still going to see prominent things for them in many years to come as AJ still has the best years of a wrestling career ahead for her. Maybe she has a long way to go, yes, in the way of getting to the level of a Trish Stratus or Alita, but give her time, and I think AJ will get there. And I think that it all comes down to how much support we give AJ, no matter if she's a fan favorite or a heel, no matter what way you choose to look at AJ or critically review her, you have to give her the benefit of the doubt, and she's definitely one of the best women's champions we have seen in at least probably five or six years, at least half of a decade, putting it into perspective for you. And that match between AJ and Caitlin was the exemplification of pure wrestling when it comes to women's wrestling. I mean, very few women can give you a match as good as what AJ and Caitlin did at WWE Payback. Some of the highlights, we saw AJ slap the referee. We saw AJ apply the Black Widow twice to Caitlin. It wasn't until the second time after previously having the move countered by Caitlin that AJ was able to make Caitlin tap out in unbelievable fashion. We also saw a highlight in the match where Biggie Langston provided a little bit of a minimal distraction on Caitlin. We also saw the psychological advantage that AJ had on Caitlin come through in that match. There were so many incredible highlights and along with the highlights that we saw in the match we had phenomenal commentary as JBL referenced the fact that Caitlin shows to do something stupid and as a result of that she lost the Divas Championship which was very unfortunate after winning that title in her hometown of Houston defeating Eve Torres and what proved that to be Eve Torres' final match. A video blog of Eve Torres quitting the WWE can be seen in our video blog which is called of course Cheap Shots 
from Jonathan Clark, and since then, Caitlin and AJ pretty much have become the focal point of the entire WWE, and it's going to be that way up until at least Money in the Bank when we see the conclusion of this series between AJ and Caitlin, when Caitlin will cash in on her rematch clause and her final opportunity at AJ for the Divas Championship. The only way for us to go after this match is finished up, and AJ more than likely will retain her Divas Championship is in the direction of AJ versus Layla for the Divas Championship or a three-way where Caitlyn could be a healed character derived from all this psychological advantage in these mind games that AJ's had on her. We will probably see AJ versus Layla versus Caitlyn for the Divas Championship and if not that, by at least SummerSlam, we're going to see a new talent in of Diva challenge AJ who has never had the opportunity to be Divas Champion before. As I mentioned before, the door of opportunity has never been opened up more widely when it comes to new talent that you should Divas coming over to challenge for the Divas Championship from NXT, which is a great show every Wednesday on the WWE.com web shows. It's one of the most watched, and it's because of things like the male and female divisions, and mostly, I think, because of the incredible female division that we see, a very diverse female division where you can always rely on good women's wrestling. The all-new NXT is one of the most highly watched web shows each week on WWE.com, and it's for good reason. I recommend it for Pure Wrestling, which is pretty much guaranteed every week. Hall of Famer Dusty Rhodes and his assistant Sasha Banks, who is a huge part of the Deeps division these days, do a great job.